Can you tell me where Molly is? And Turn up the BS. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where there's a lot of fun to be had at the world premiere of It's A Lot. How are you doing this evening? <laughs> well, I'm blinded by all the lights, but it's a brilliant turnout. I couldn't have asked for more for Femi because this has been such uh, you know, a journey for him to write this, and now we're getting to see the final product. Can't wait. What did, you, what did you think when you first read the script? I loved it. I saw it actually very early on when Femi was, you know, developing it, and and it was about three years before it got made, and um, it was just refreshing. It reminded me of those late '80s films, you know, like Ferris Bueller and Risky Business, and just those universal tales of, you know, the parents are away, the kids throw a party. I think everybody loves those kind of films, and it was cool as well. There was, there was a lot of terminology that I wasn't familiar with that they, they've all educated the northerner so now I know what peng means <laughs> I know that's actually one of the things that kind of comes from the film is that it's, it's, a, it's a language in itself isn't it that's sort of spoken in chords. and it's nice it's endearing so everyone that goes to see it will you know will be able to feel like they're part of the gang so it was nice for me to um to like adopt this newfound street talk, this urban talk. And it's like, what? What's Peng? <laughs> and working with Femi, what was that like? So much fun. I mean, you know, he's a writer and he's an actor, so he's very generous to his other actors. He understands what you need to go through as a process. So, and he's just, he's just a cool guy. He's very caring and he cares about what he does. And it was a good atmosphere when we were filming it. The man of the moment. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. And you, uh, you must be very, very excited. This is the premiere of your first film. This is it. This is this is probably the most exciting moment for the past three years, like period for me, I think. 100%. Well, with regards to the story, there seems to be a real moral behind it. And I wondered whether that was what drove you in the first place. Definitely, definitely. I think it was important for us to get the message across about the leukemia, as well as making a comedy. Because, like, you know, we've known about the ACLT, which is an actual charity for years. And we wanted to, you know, do something that pushed out their message, but in a way that was palatable to young people. And so and I, I hope hope we've done that and you know I hope the audience love it because that's why we do this it's for the audience so hopefully you know we, we've done the business and also the other thing that came from it for me as well is is the the, the about being honest yeah. and truthful it's hard it's hard to be honest and truthful in life you know and so I think I think the main thing is that being true to yourself as a young person and that gets you the girl that gets you the self-esteem that gets you everything that you you desire as a young person as opposed to everything that you think gets you the girl and gets you the, the, the everything that you desire you know and and that's hopefully what we got across but you know well, I'm sure we, we've had some, you know, shortcomings, but, you know, we try. We try our best. You know, it's a, it's a very bra brave first attempt at, at filmmaking because you're, you're helming the film. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I co-directed it with my friend Darwood Grace. And, you know, it was great for us to come and, together and do that because, uh, you know, we've done a lot together. And so it was very important for us to do that. But at the same time, you know, it is, it's, um, it's, it's a big challenge. And, you know, filmmaking is a completely different challenge to acting. And so it was a big set. But now I'm a Addicted. I want to do it. I, I, I'm hopefully doing my next film early next year. So, you know, by but God's do you grace. Have a, a, a different kind of respect for directors having. I have a different have... type of respect for everyone that has ever made a film. No film is rubbish to me anymore. <laughs> no film is rubbish. I can sit through. You could ask my missus. I can sit through every type of film. Any, even a rubbish film, just because, you know, people have invested themselves in it and they've invested their money and their time and their, and you know, I, I, it's taken me, it's taken me three years to get here. Like, you know, literally three years. Like, you know, I sent Nikki, my co-writer, a message three years ago. And now we're here, you know. So it's like it's 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 a special moment. It's a beautiful moment. You're the you're the love interest in the in the film, I'm but sure, uh, yes, I am. Yes, but she's not particularly nice, is she? No, she's actually she's the the school beep. But it was very 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 exciting to play that because that was not what I was growing up, and so it was quite challenging but very exciting. Do you do when you're playing a part that's so detached from who you are as a person? Do you then maybe base it on somebody that perhaps you knew in your past? Definitely people that I knew and also I watched Mean Girls. I went back to Mean Girls, looked at my old DVD collection and yeah, used a lot of inspiration from that, which is and great. You're working with a director uh, who's also written it and, and you're acting with. What was that experience like? 
That was interesting, obviously, because he's, you know, there's Darwood and Femi, and they both directing, are directing this, although obviously Femi's in front of the camera and Darwood's behind the camera, so there's directing from all angles, but it was it worked, and I thought it was great. Your character for me in the film is the... Well, you've the seen it, that's yes, good. I have seen it, I have seen it. She's, she's the, the, the balance, yeah, very, you know, isn't she, really? The sensible one out of everybody. She, she really is, and that's quite hard to play in a, in a movie where everybody is, you know, big and, and brash and funny, and to just kind of be the one to really bring home any issues of it. This is quite, um, it's quite a challenge, actually. It's quite grounding. Yeah, it's, it's it's really grounding to be the, uh, the like the moral pillar, but um, it's definitely the part that I wanted to play in this. I would never try to be the funny person because it's not really my uh, my my area of expertise. Let's just put it that way. So um, yeah, but it's really good to do. And, and the, obviously, the films. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun, actually. It's a lot. <laughs> nice plug. It's a lot of fun. Um, it was it was amazing to do. It's one of the best projects I've ever done. Um, it was. It's great to be able to do a film with all British, like British actors, British talent, everything like that. It was just fantastic. So, um, and just the, we spent like three weeks on set, and being on set with comedians such as Kojo, Miss London, Eddie Caddy, it's just my job to try and keep straight faces. Yeah, it was very difficult, very difficult. And with a particular memory that you'll take yeah, away you with know, you from working on the film? You know, there are just so many. There are so many good memories about it. Um, it was very hard to do, you know, British films, um, outside, cold. Um, but, um, yeah, and it was a definitely a really great experience. Loads of great memories to take back. Mainly it was just being with everybody on set and just having a good good time, really. It was fantastic. You're the bully in the story, aren't you? I'm the nasty piece of work, yeah. I'm the, um, yeah. I always say it's, all, that it's fun playing the villain, so is that, is that kind of what you saw when you first played the part? Uh, yeah, very much so. I, I've, in my career I've played a few lovable idiots, so um, when Femi sent, Fe, sent me the script I thought about the time I played someone nasty, you know. And how do you kind of channel that? How do you, you know, kind of get into that um, mindset? I think it's, it's pretty easy to be nasty, isn't it? Just pretend you're having a bad day. Yeah, well, I think we all secretly would like to be a nasty piece of work, even just for a day or two. So it was pretty easy. And, and working with Femi, what was that like? Because obviously he's directing as well as. Yeah, uh, well, Femi's, Femi's a very good friend of mine. We've known each other for quite a few years now. Um, we, did a, we did a horror film a couple of years ago together, and we became very firm friends. So, you know, when he, when he got the script together and he got the money together, I was very keen to help in any way I could. So I said, let me come and play the lunatic. What was it about the script that uh, first drew you to it? Well, I just liked the way that I felt like Lorna could have been someone that I could have been in a parallel universe. I felt like, you know, she was somebody who was vulnerable and on paper, you know, fulfilling stereotypes of like this young single mom that no one really understands and, you know, people would be quick to judge her. But I felt like if things had been different for me, it could have been me. And so I felt like really it wasn't acting it was just me just getting in touch with the side of me that would feel stressed about the same things but under different circumstances so I felt like as well like being that it's comedy it was a nice serious element to it so I was able to um, use it as a way to like an excuse to basically be like get it here just be me but you know as a single mum so it's quite cool but no I really loved it and Femi you know he's really talented I'm so proud of him you know he's not even 30 yet and he's like kind of, you know, the next Spike Lee in the making. And he's some, and I'm, all of these guys, you know, whether it's Noel Clark or Femi, Adam Deacon, they're all guys that I've kind of looked to and thought, I have to work with these guys, you know. We're all coming from a similar place and we're all kind of of the moment. And it's just great to be involved in that kind of a movement in the, in the movie world. It's the first movie that I've done that's had a UK cinema release. So it's oh, it's a congratulations, it's a very exciting. Yeah, the f film I did before was like a, um, out on DVD, but this is the first one that's had a cinema release. So it's really special to actually come to a premiere that you're where you're in the film. I've been to so many other people's premieres, so that's a really nice moment for me, yeah. With regards to as well your part, I mean, we're looking and we can see you're very glamorous, but actually you, you, in the film you're far from that. So was that is that hard for you to have to be able to kind of strip all of that back and be prepared to not to have any vanity when it comes to the role that you play? I really like the idea of like just like not having any hair extensions and having no makeup, but then the makeup they did put on me was to make me look worse. I like that because I just think 
for me, trying to show people that I act as well as present, I don't want to turn up and do a cameo and be DJ Sarah Jane in red lipstick. I want to go and be somebody that no one's interested in what does she look like. It's what am I bringing to the table as an actress. So I feel like it might allow people to take it a bit more seriously rather than just thinking, oh, here we go, you know. Oh, can you tell us how you became attached to the project? Oh, um, well, Femi and me have the same agent. So when Femi was setting this up, probably about two and a half years, three, two and a half to three years ago, I called my agent and said, do you want to have a chat? And we came in and had a chat. Did a, I gave a reading of the, my wonderful character, uh, Mr. Hathaly. And um, right away he said, will you do it? And, uh, and I was just, yeah. And it, it, as with these things, you know, money was in, money was out and so forth. Your character brings a lot of humour. It does, yes. doesn't he? Was that a lot yeah. of fun for you to play out? It was actually, yeah. He's, I mean, he's not... On the surface, on the, on the surface, he doesn't come across as very nice. You know, he's a bit racist. But there, it's like it's not actually racism. It's just bad old da dad jokes. Like so, um, so yeah. And, and it's fun. And the first time you see me, I'm fully naked, which is a bit of a shock for the audience, but and for my wife. <laughs> What did, what did you feel about Femi? I mean, this is his first time taking the helm as director. It was great. Uh, yeah, Femi was great as a director. Uh, he was working on, alongside Darwood, and um, both of them together were actually actually really good, and knew what, seemed to know what they were doing. Does it seem as well that because it's you know with independent filmmaking, there's just this camaraderie where everybody just chips in and gets on because they all want to make it happen, really? Yeah, absolutely. And it's great. Uh, what, what about this is because I'm sadly I've been I've been around a long time. I'm nearly 30 years in the business now. And all these kids, they're all young. They're all fresh and new and they've got so much buzz and energy and everybody's just like, yeah, whatever, let's just do it. It's a bit like a, an episode of Fame or something, isn't it? Let's make a movie. And, then, and they've done it, it's great. Actually, that's a great thing you, that you say in that because, because we can go and make movies now because of digital yeah. technology. That just opens up the board for everybody that, that has an inclination to do it. You just give it a go. Really. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean. Yes, I think it's good, but people still got to remember that you got to have a good story and you got to have a good script and and some good planning. People forget to the plan these days, but yeah, digital the digital age has made it a lot easier for people to make films. Is it an exciting evening for everyone? It is, it is. What's really funny is I used to work here as an usher years ago, so yeah, it's like coming home. How did you become um, attached to the project? Um, the ACLT got me involved. Um, I think they're one of the sponsors tonight and they asked me if I wanted to come down and um, it was between this and the Inside Soap Awards and I chose this because this is more honourable. Not that the Inside Soap Awards isn't, though please don't print that. Um, but no, yeah, and I'm glad, I'm glad to be here and to support Femi. I was going to say, it's such a big achievement, isn't it, to, to get a film made anyway, but to think you're writing, directing and acting in yeah. it. Yeah, um, it's a massive achievement to get a film on the big screen. I've made two short films. I'm hoping to make a uh, feature film next year, so, you know, he's beat me to it. Congratulations to him. But um, no, I mean, it's amazing, it's amazing. You've got to give him props. Your character is, uh, has to educate Femi's, really, doesn't he, in the art of the language? In the art of, uh, in the art of, I don't know what you'd call it, ghetto speak or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That is one of the opening scenes. Um, but he's, I don't know, he's not as ghetto as he thinks. I think that's the whole thing with my character. Um, yeah. I think that, that what's got strikes me with the film um, is that it's all about we all need to feel like that we belong, don't we really? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, everyone kind of, especially at that young age as well, our characters in the film are meant to be like 16, 17. And I think that is the age where you want to belong to something, whether it's a bad group of kids or a good group of kids or something. So, yeah, I guess so. With regards to your character, when you when you first read it, did you feel like it was something that you could just really have fun with and kind of send up a little bit? Definitely, it's, I think as well because Femi and that were doing it, obviously, um, and I kind of knew them a little bit before, so I knew it was just going to kind of be just a laugh the whole way through. And we got to ad lib a lot during the film and improvise, which I think you need in a comedy. And so yeah. <laughs> You're the kind of bloke this country was built on. <laughs> Even all PC and me. And PC Declan. Black hands and bed. This is so exciting. Let's so let's just Louise aim to please. <laughs> this is the worst birthday party ever. Sort it out. What are you waiting for? I think you're amazing. It's a lot. Oh, that'll be a live one.